For today's video, we are going to talk about how to solve infinite geometric series and we are going to explain in details how do we get the answer. So when we say infinite geometric series, it is the indicated sum of infinite geometric sequence. And the sum of infinite geometric sequence is S equals A sub 1 over 1 minus R. Where A sub 1, that is the first term, and R is the common ratio, and the absolute value of R is less than 1. If the common ratio is less than 1, that means the series is converged. That means the sum can be determined. If the common ratio is greater than or equal to 1, the series is diverged. That means we cannot determine the sum of the given series. So those are the concepts that you need to remember in order for us to solve infinite geometric series. So let's start and let's have an example. On the given set of example, we are going to find the sum of each infinite series. If it is exists, explain why the sum exists or do not exist. On example number 1, we have 1 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 25 up to infinity. So let us identify first our given. Our first term, that is a sub 1, and that is 1. Our second term, that is 1 over 5. So let us have the common ratio. To find the common ratio, simply divide the second term by the first term. Let's have a sub 2 divided by a sub 1, and that is 1 over 5 divided by 1, and that is simply 1 over 5. So this will be our common ratio. Since our common ratio is less than 1, that means our series is converged. That means we can easily identify the sum of the given series if our common ratio is less than 1. So to find the sum, let us have the formula S equals A sub 1 over 1 minus R. So let us have the first term, that is 1 over 1 minus the common ratio, that is 1 over 5. So let us rewrite 1 and then let us have 5 on the denominator, and then 5 times 1, that is 5 minus 1, let us have 1, and then 5 minus 1, that is 4 over 5, 1 divided by 4 over 5, that is 5 over 4. So this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have 4 plus 12 plus 36 F to infinity. So let us have the first term, that is 4. Second term, that is 12. So let us have the common ratio. Let us divide the second term by the first term. So this will be 12 over 4, and that is 3. Since our common ratio is greater than 1, that means our series is diverged. If our series is diverged, therefore, the sum cannot be determined because the common ratio is greater than or equal to 1. On example number 3, we have 1 over 6 plus 1 half plus 3 over 2 up to infinity. So the first thing that we're going to do is to check whether the series is diverge or converge. In order for us to do that, let us identify the common ratio. So let us have first the first term that is 1 over 6. Second term, that is 1 half, and let us have the common ratio. Let us simply divide the second term by the first term. So this will be 1 half divided by 1 over 6. So to simplify this one, let us simply multiply the outer part and the inner part. So this will be 1 times 6, and that is 6, and 2 times 1, that is 2, and 6 divided by 2, that is 3. So this will be our common ratio. So since our common ratio is greater than 1, our series is diverge. If our series is diverge, we cannot determine the sum of the given series. On number 4, we have 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth half to infinity. So let us have first the, the a sub 1, that is 1, and then a sub 2, that is 1 half. So let us have the common ratio. Let's have a sub 2 divided by a sub 1. This will be 1 half 
divide by 1, and that is simply 1 half. Since our common ratio is less than 1, therefore our series is converged. If our series is converged, we can easily identify the sum of the given series. So let us have the formula S equals A sub 1 over 1 minus R. So this will be 1 over 1 minus 1 half. That is the common ratio. So we are going to have 1 and then let us have 2 on the denominator. 2 times 1, that is 2 minus 1. And then let us write here, that is 1 over 2 minus 1, that is 1. And then let us have 2 on the denominator. 1 divided by 1 half, that is 2. And this will be our answer. On example number 5, we have summation of 4 times quantity 1 third raised to n minus 1 from 1 up to infinity. So the first thing that we're going to do is to identify the first two terms in the given series in order for us to find a common ratio. So let us have the first term. So this will be 4 times 1 third raised to n minus 1. We are going to have 4 times 1 third. So the value of n, that is 1. It will give us 4 times 1 third. 1 minus 1, that is 0, and we are going to have 4, 1 third raised to 0, that is 1, and 4 times 1, that is 4. So this will be our first term. And for our second term, let us have 4 times 1 third raised to n minus 1. This will be 4 times 1 third raised to 2 minus 1, and that is 4 times 1 third 2 minus 1, that is 1, and 1 third raised to 1, that is simply 1 third. And 4 multiplied by 1 third, that is 4 over 3. So this will be our second term. And to find the common ratio, let us divide the second term by the first term, that is 4 third divided by 4. Let us simply multiply this one. This will be 4 times 3 times 4, let us simply cancel this one, it will give us 1 third. So this will be our common ratio. Since our common ratio is less than 1, that means our series is converged. If our series is converged, we can easily identify the value of the sum of the given series. So let us have the formula S equals A sub 1 over 1 minus R. So our a sub 1, that is 4, and then 1 minus our common ratio, that is 1 third. So I'm going to write 4, and then let us have 3 on the denominator. 3 times 1, that is 3 minus 1. It will give us 4 over 3 minus 1, that is 2 over 3. And to simplify this one, let us have... 4 multiplied by 3, divide by 2. 4 times 3, that is 12, divide by 2, and that is 6. And this will be our answer. On our last example, we have summation of 3 times 2 raised to n minus 1 from 1 after infinity. The first thing that we are going to do is to find the first two terms of the given series in order for us to find the common ratio. And through the common ratio, we are going to identify whether our series is converged or diverged. If our common ratio is less than 1, our series is converged. Therefore, we can identify the sum of the given series. If our common ratio is greater than 1 or equal to 1, our series is diverged. If our series is diverged, we cannot determine the sum of the given series. So let us have first the first term. So this will be 3 times 2 raised to n minus 1, and that is 3 times 2, and the value of n, that is 1. So this will be 3 times 2, 1 minus 1, that is 0. This will be 3 times 2 raised to 0, that is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. So this will be our first term. And our second term, that is 3 times 2 raised to n minus 1, and that is 3 times 2 raised to 2 minus 1. 
it will give us 3 times 2. 2 minus 1, that is 1. And 2 raised to 1, that is 2. And 3 times 2, that is 6. So this will be our second term. So to find the common ratio, let us divide the second term by the first term. That is 6 divided by 3, and that is 2. Since 2 is greater than 1, therefore our series is diverge. If our series is diverge, we cannot determine the sum of the given series. So I hope you've learned from this lesson. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.